in the trauma and political paradigm book, I, I use the phrase cognitive adaptations, which is exactly what you just said, which is our brain comes up with uh, like a life theme to contain what's happening within us. Like I can't act out. I can't make a scene, you know, so that cognition pop, pops in and like shuts down the maybe rightful defensive activation. If somebody can do that, that's a huge step forward. If you're, if you're able to notice the activation and withhold the behavioral adaptation, if you're able to notice the activation and pull back on the behavioral adaptation and maybe give yourself a little bit of time to feel it and then allow another thought to pop in your mind or your safety anchoring menu or whatever it is. Yeah. That, that'd be ideal. That'd be fantastic. You know, that I would really set somebody up like the way I like to recommend to people that these behavioral adaptations, if they're destructive, don't do them. If, if it's, you know, cutting, I don't want people to do that. But like I, I work with people that they do struggle with, like, I want to eat to feel better. So like, okay, let's just, just respect that. That's the way that your body's come up with. And it has been successful in a way. It has successfully contained your defensive activation and made you feel better. So in, in a way, it kind of has worked. Okay, let's just respect it for what it is. But what I'm hearing is that you want to do something different. Great. That's, that's fantastic. So it's really hard to stop that. But I recognize you want to stop that. So then what we can do then is the next time that you notice yourself going toward the Oreos or whatever it is, ice cream, whatever. The next time you notice yourself going to that, if you can just kind of catch it and tell yourself, I'm allowed to, I can do this if I want to, but I'm going to give myself five minutes before I do. Or I'm allowed to eat whatever it is. I can do that. I can make that choice. I'm an adult. I can do that if I want to. I'll give myself permission. But... I'm going to go first take a deep breath in, the, in another room or maybe walk around the block or whatever. I'm going to do something else. And then when I come back, if I still want it, I might give myself permission to do that without, without judge. Like it's, it's just a choice that I'm making at that point. So it could look like that. Like it, it's, it might buy you a time, a little bit of time. You're giving yourself permission if you want to, but you're also taking complete ownership over it. Like if you do choose to do that, that is just a choice that you're making and there's no point in beating yourself up for, over it. And we'll see what happens next time. So I, I think it's not a bad way to go about it either is catching it, give yourself permission, but the, con the contingency is that you got to do something to, to create that time in between the behavioral adaptation and the realization of the behavioral adaptation. But that requires doing that. It's a framework. Think of it as like a framework because what Flo said is fantastic. If you can catch it and do something different, that's ideal. Go ahead and do that but that is very, very difficult. So as like a step toward that, as like an intermediate step, that's where this idea could, could play in, which is give yourself permission, but the rule is you have to do something else. The step before that would be to completely deprive yourself of whatever the thing is and just you don't have it in the home, that way it's not even an option. You know, that, that could be a, a very extreme step in the other direction. So it's like, how do we make steps toward the goal of, I want to reduce my binge eating. What's the step toward that that's going to help you out this next time because it, it will it will come up again. And maybe you can be honest with yourself and, and, and say, I can't handle, first off, I won't even be able to notice that I'm in the behavioral adaptation until I'm actually in it. You know, so I can't, I'm not that far enough along with my safety state development to recognize it before it's there. Or maybe you're yeah. far enough along to where you can recognize it before that first bite. But then at that distance is like, <laughs> I, can't, I can't fight this. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's real. Or maybe you're far enough along in developing your safety state where as you're walking toward the kitchen, you're like, oh, I, I know what's happening. I see it happening. I see it unfolding before me. And so it's like, where, what, I think it's kind of like, where can you notice that the behavioral adaptation is kicking in? Ideally, you notice it as some, a mild dysregulation before it even kicks in. So it's just like, it's how can we break this process up to make it more likely that somebody will do something that's a safety anchoring exercise or a UDS exercise? How do we make it more likely you'll do something like that versus uh, not, I guess? The extreme other side is um, having an effort attitude. I'm dysregulated. This is what I'm going to do. And F it. It kicks into overwhelm. And when I'm in overwhelm, then it's just F it. 
Yeah, so that that would be the extreme of behavioral adaptation is that you're someone is in dysregulation and they've reached maybe a fight or rage effort. So that's one extreme. The other extreme is I deprive myself of anything that I maybe I do genuinely enjoy. Maybe I like Oreos a lot. But the other extreme would be I just I can't have access to this. And maybe that's real. Maybe that's that's what someone needs. So in between those extremes though, I think there's a lot of options and maybe it's, I've caught it and I can do something else. Great job. Pat yourself on the back. Maybe it's F it and I'm going to do it, but I'll restrict myself to five versus 10 Oreos. And I'm just saying Oreos as an example. I have no idea if that's anybody's mm -hmm. go to or not, but maybe it's F it, but uh, here's my constraint. I'm going to eat my five Oreos and then I'm going to scream. I don't know. Maybe the adaptation is F it. I'm going to eat as many Oreos as I want but I have to take one deep breath in between each one. None of these are going to be pleasurable. I'm not saying that whatsoever, but how can we go from the extreme, you know, toward mindful? How can we work our way back toward mindfulness? Mm -hmm. And so all or nothing does not typically work for most people. If you can do it, go right ahead. If someone can do all or nothing, great. But there might be like a baby step that someone can make today. And then the next day it's like, can I do one step better? Can I do one Oreo less? compared to yesterday, maybe? Or can I take two deep breaths in between each Oreo versus one? So can we get that, you know, can we, can we draw out the potential for more safety in our system and less dysregulation? You sort of like preparing yourself. Yeah, I think the preparation, that's actually the, that's the second stage of change. Uh, the first one is not even being aware you need change. I forget what they call that. But the second stage is contemplation. The third one is, I think, preparation. And that's where you know you have a problem. You're not quite ready to do anything about it, but you're preparing for it. You're putting things into place. And maybe one of those things is having, you know, this is my final day. I'm going to give myself two weeks to do whatever my behavioral adaptation is. But every day I'm going to do it less and less. And on this final day, that is the day I'm going to stop. Like It could be preparation could evolve something like this, like that. Preparation could be, I know I'm going to do this thing anyways. How can I minimize the impact that I'm having on myself? You know, what else can I set up? Maybe that's a deep breath in between bites. Maybe that's a regulation station where you go and use your safety anchors or fidgets or coping skills. Um, so, yeah, the ideal is that we can have food and be at peace with it and be in the moment and taste it and enjoy it and socialize maybe, right? That's the ideal maybe that's that's actually one end of the extreme is the ideal the other end of the extreme is complete dysregulation this is my behavioral adaptation kind of thing so how do you work toward that toward the ideal and maybe you'll never get there that's not the point the point is how can you work your way toward that which would have more self-regulation involved you just listened to a segment from one of my q a meetups if you're ready to start working on your self-development or trauma recovery you can join me in a future one. All you got to do is subscribe to my Total Access membership. Through the membership, you get access to the twice monthly meetups, a whole second podcast, daily growth challenges, and all three of my trauma recovery courses. This is your personal invitation, and I cannot wait to see you there. This podcast is not therapy, not intended to be therapy or be a replacement for therapy. Nothing in this creates or indicates a therapeutic relationship. Please consult with your therapist or seek for one in your area if you are experiencing mental health symptoms. Nothing in this podcast should be construed to be specific life advice. It is for educational and entertainment purposes only. More resources are available in the description of this episode and in the footer of justinlmft.com.